Now that you've assigned vendor types and products to specific suppliers and warehouses, it's time to give those warehouses inventory levels so that we know how much you can transfer or how much to order, as well as giving unit prices and some supplier email information and exporting and importing it. So what you're going to do is go to settings, click on bulk export import, and then you're going to export all data. And what this data is, this is what we've imported or that Amazon has actually given us from your API. Okay, so now what we're doing here is we may want to manipulate some of this data so that it's more useful to us. But in the interest of just getting you set up quickly, here's the first steps. Granted, you can update all this information, but there's going to be a few spots that you're going to want to focus on. One of the first one is going to be inventory levels. So now that you've, you're going to click the inventory levels tab, uh, sheet in Excel, and what you're going to want to update is the quantity because we're going to need to want we're going to want to know how much inventory is at these warehouses for each individual product. And as long as you've assigned a product to a warehouse, this will show up and all you're going to need to do is fill up this quantity because then we're going to be able to say, well, you can transfer inventory quickly so you don't need to potentially reorder from your supplier. Okay? So that'll be the first component. Next, you're going to want to click on your vendor. And the suggested spot to go to is email address. I would definitely fill that in to make sure that you're not only updating your email addresses but you can even update the primary contacts name because so stocked when you're creating POs we can automatically create a PO and send an email or a work order to this person and we'll fill this information out for you. And then the last component is go to the product sheet and what you're going to want to go to is potentially internal part number and then you're gonna go all the way over and if it's the same as your ASIN or SKU or anything you can always just copy this field over and you're gonna want to keep going over to the right and you're gonna want to find your supplier your primary supplier I suggest filling in manufacturer part number and this might be the same manufacturer part number as your internal part number but Inputting that information is going to be helpful because when the PO is produced, you can this information will appear there, as well as your unit price and if you and your uh, sorry and your MOQ. So MOQ, unit price, manufacturer part number, and internal part number are going to be good things to be, have done on the product page because they're going to allow us to kind of fill in some of those gaps of data and give better suggestions on forecasting. If you don't know unit price, just put in zero here and you know just drag it all the way down and then you can go from there now what's nice is when you then once you've done it and let's say you've saved it okay and what we're gonna do is then choose the choose the file we're gonna go to our downloads where we saved it and it should start importing and what will happen at this juncture is that we may find some errors so for example if it's this product and you can see that it's cell, you know, AI11 for that supplier. Which product is it? You can pre-fill that in. Or if there's unit price, for example, and you don't know it, you can pre-fill all this information in and then scroll to the bottom of the page and finish the import. Okay? So you can do that either right here or what you can do is update everything on your Excel document, go back to the top, choose the file again, and re-import it. Once that's done, you will move on to your next step of setting up lead times.